Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today, I brought Anthony back. If everybody has seen my other two episodes with Anthony, he wrote two books for empty nesting parents. And um, the reason why he's here is because we had a conversation after one of the episodes and we were talking about how I don't drink. And he said, you should do a podcast episode about that and have, you know, somebody ask you questions about being sober. And I said, well, Yes, I should. Guess who's going to do it? So here he is. Welcome back, Anthony. Good to Thank see you, you. I like I like that I get to turn the tables and ask you questions this time. I know I'm kind of afraid. This will be fun, though. I, it's it's vulnerable for me. I feel like I'm an open book, but I don't know what you're going to ask. So, um, But basically, I know a lot of people entering the holidays have a tough time with their sobriety or just being around family. And um, it's just a harder time. And it, it just, what is it? The holiday cheer is yeah. always, you know, the commercials, everything is spiked eggnog and all that stuff. And um, so, yeah, it is, it's probably a little more challenging, but I feel like every day is a challenge. I mean, when it comes down to it, when you are a, somebody that liked to drink all the time, just yeah. because it's Tuesday, <laughs> well, we, we have, have to, to get we have to get the congratulations out of the order right because you said in september you hit a year mm -hmm. right and here we are entering your second holiday season i guess yeah with yeah. uh you know with family right? and kids and grandkids and parties and people coming over and i just it's an intense time and yeah. a lot for a lot of us fun does sometimes either equal alcohol or include alcohol. So you're going to be right in the mix of it. So yeah, I was kind of thinking, you know, how did you survive last year? And have you thought about this year at all? Like what you're going to do or, or you have your plan in place, so to speak? Uh, you know, I haven't really thought about it. I got together with my mom and my sister last weekend and we did our Christmas cards and stuff. And that was always a drink fest, yeah. spiked eggnog or whatever. Um, and none of us drank this time, which I have to say, this is so weird. I have noticed, and I don't know if it's a coincidence or what, but I have noticed the last few family get togethers, hardly anybody is drinking. Huh. And I have not ever said or made anybody feel weird, whatever. My mom's have the lecture, lectured everyone. Yeah, no. Hey, everyone, we're not drinking tonight. I, yeah, no, I want everybody. If you want to drink, drink. I, I want people to have fun and whatever. And so I think it was my, I don't know if it was my daughter or my sister, but I was like, was it just me all the time? Just getting trashed oh, gosh. and everybody else was just maybe having one or two. And I like covering yeah. everybody else's bases and they you know she said I think it was my daughter and she was like no I think everybody else drank too but you know maybe not just as much I mean yeah. just to me holidays equaled drinking right uh Husker games equal drinking anytime our family got together it was what yeah. are we gonna drink what are we drinking that was my focus not not just being I love being with my family but anyway I, I found it very interesting. Yeah. Do you think, that. do you, so do you think, I, I mean, one would be their drink, they're not drinking as much kind of in solidarity for you or, or they never really drank that much. Uh, you, <laughs> I think you, that's what gosh. <laughs> like do you we think would they think... have, do you think they feel pressure? Have you asked them? Do they feel, do they feel uncomfortable drinking around you? I guess that's a question. I honestly don't think so. My brother has never been a big drinker. He, you know, he's one of those, you know, oh, we found this new beer. Everybody's talking about you should try it, you know, yeah. where I'm like, just leave the six pack right here. Buddy. <laughs> I'll let you know when I'm done with the six pack. He's never been a big drinker. My sister and my mom and I would be the ones that would have the holiday cheer the most. And I think it depends too, like if you're dieting, you know, because yeah. that, Alcohol does play a huge factor in your weight, like it or not. Oh, yeah. Alcohol. You're For either sure. going to only drink and <laughs> never eat, or you're going to gain weight. That's just the way it is. I've thought about drinking, my experience of drinking, and then how drinking equals fun, and fun is Friday and Saturday nights and going out, and that becomes a family thing. And then you think of yourself, are you setting an expectation for your children? Right? Are your 
your kids are looking at you saying, oh, fun equals drinking. Going out is fun, right? And mm -hmm. and family equals drinking. And that's kind of a, I don't know, I guess it's a weird tradition that we all partake in together. Yes, 100%. Yeah. And I, I have always felt like I um, had a decent personality. Like I didn't need alcohol to help yeah. me come out and be more social. I've always been social. So I don't know what my reasoning was. It just, it just amplified it a little bit. Yeah. I know it never like gave me courage to do anything. I always was willing to get up on stage or be the one. And so my, but my kids were just used to seeing me like that. Yeah. And that's kind of sad you know, in a way yeah. it's like, I don't, I guess I don't want my kids to look back and maybe they don't, maybe they don't think, you know, you're thinking for somebody else, but I guess I sit back and think, oh, I don't want them to be like, mm, you know how mom gets, you know? But I think we, we kind of all teach that lesson, right? If you buy them sugar cereals and sugar cereals is, are, is okay, right? If, the a, if a treat equals going out to ice cream or fun equals alcohol, I mean, these are things we did, right? And I, I think, you know, everybody's so different. I wish I had that gene where I could just go out and have a glass of wine or just, oh, you know, it's it's uh, Christmas, so I'm going to have a couple cocktails. It's yeah, Christmas. Do you, do you, so you don't think you could just have one? We couldn't, at a wedding, we're all toasting with champagne. You're going to forego that moment in your life, right? which is fine. I'm just saying that yeah. you don't think that that would be something you don't want to do, I guess. So I did start off thinking that like, well, if there's a special occasion, I know I'm going to want to, if everybody else is, but part of me is competing with myself. I've already yeah. made it a year and some, yeah. why, why would I ruin that streak? Yeah. And why I don't need it. Yeah. It doesn't matter what I'm drinking. I can still be doing the cheers. I can still be making the toast. Of course. But I would be afraid of my personality. It's never just one. Yeah. And if I say, okay, well, I did go out last weekend and I only had two. So maybe this weekend I can go out and have two. And I know, I know Dawn. Dawn is okay. <laughs> now next Let's weekend. Let's go. Yep. I drink last Saturday. Maybe I'll do Friday and Saturdays only yeah. or, you know, and then it's every day that ends with why. And here we go. <laughs> and I think, and I think, you know, the streak is an important thing too, because it is a milestone, right? And you, yeah. why would you want to break that streak? I mean, for, yeah. for a drink, right? Mm -hmm. So and let I, me, let me ask you, if you were, if you were having Thanksgiving at my house, you're coming over for Thanksgiving mm -hmm. or you're going to a friend's house on Friday night, do you bring something for you? Do you know that, okay, this activity is going to be drinking at Anthony's and we're playing games, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to bring seltzer water. I'm going to bring this. Whatever. Yeah. I would bring probably seltzer water. That's, that's what I drink here um, at yep. my house. Um, but I could just drink water, water, you know, yeah. Yeah. Filtered water. I mean, I wouldn't want anybody going to any trouble to get me the NA beers or anything like that. I don't really like them. It's kind of like decaf coffee to me, yeah. Yeah. you know, like yeah. if I'm not going to get, get yeah. the buzz, What's there's the really, point? yeah. yeah. Um, they don't taste that good to me anyway, but yeah, no, I don't do any mocktail or I haven't, I'm yeah. not shut down on it. I guess really what a strong thing that I would want to emphasize to people is that it is a day-to-day -day thing, not thinking, yeah. what am I going to do in a week? Or what am I going to do at so-and-so's wedding potentially in three years? I just want to get through today, just continuing doing what I'm doing and yeah. not worry about how I was in the past and looking down on myself for moments when I wish I wouldn't have drank as much as I did today. I am sober and I'm proud of myself for being sober. Yeah. It's amazing. And, 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 I, I just want everybody else to do whatever they feel is have best for them. I hope my family doesn't feel weird about me not drinking because I don't frown on anybody else at I mean, all. It sounds like they're fully supportive, right? Especially if they're 
comfortable drinking in front of you, which, mm -hmm. which they are. And yeah. it's great that they're not drinking a ton in front of you. But I mean, it's it's fact that they're comfortable is great. I yeah. Think. And I'll go out and get the beers out of the cooler for whoever I made <laughs> my mom. Um, I put rum in her eggnog, you know, last week she didn't end up drinking it, but I, I made it for her. And usually I would sample, you know, to make sure it tasted okay. So I'm like, <laughs> let me know if it's too strong. Um, but I don't know. It just hasn't bothered me. And I really am more shocked at that than anything else that I don't miss it. I don't miss the buzz. I don't miss that feeling. I feel like I did it so many times. What's yeah. to miss? I already know what happens. Yeah. Every time I go on a diet, I tell myself I've had enough cheese puffs to last a lifetime. Why do I need any more cheese puffs? Right. And you said something like that on your sobriety thing. And I'm yeah. like, I just really like cheese puffs. <laughs> I, you know. Yeah. I and I did like getting drunk. I yeah. thought it was so fun. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess I did it enough times. I don't know. It'd be like a roller coaster, you know? Yeah, yeah it's fun. And then you do it six hundred times and it's like, okay, well. So it let does. me let me ask you this. So I have two friends that don't drink, right? Both both for health reasons. Um, but there are situations where I don't include them. And maybe that's horrible for me to even say that. But <laughs> you know, if we're going wine tasting in Napa or we're going right. to a happy hour or we're going to a bar tonight, right? And that's the destination, right? I, I think through my head. You know, I, I probably shouldn't. I probably should invite these people and and let them make the choice. But I'm kind of making the choice for them. Have you have you felt that, or you know, have you have you been invited wine tasting and you're like, well, that's not going to be a fun Saturday, right? Yeah, I mean, no, honestly, I haven't. Well, I, not that I know of. That's a good question. I'm not sure, but I would want to be included. But like wine tasting, I mean, in in the term, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, so it's like, exactly. I'm, I'm sober, but I'm sure that they, it would be a neat experience to go and see wherever the thing is. But if everybody's getting drunk and stuff, it's not that I'm above it or would think less of them, but that's the whole point is to go and drink. So yeah, I would think that's kind of a, a gimme that nobody needs to invite me to something yeah. like that. If they're having something at a bar, like a going away party or something. Yeah, I would you go to that. Yes. Yes, because that's just the same. I mean, my whole family, cousins, everybody, they all, most of them drink. Yeah. And so that, you know what you're walking into. <laughs> that's, and there's never peer pressure. There's never anybody like, that's one thing I just don't understand when people are like, why aren't you drinking? I remember you, doing that. You haven't had that yet though. You haven't, someone hasn't said to you, well, you know, you can't, you just have one or da, da, yes. da, da. You yes. know, I mean, I think, I think. Some reaction for some people would be defensive, right? As soon as you say, I work out every day, or I don't do this, or I do this, there would be some defensiveness for some people, right? Mm -hmm. Have you experienced that? I did uh, right away when I quit at that Christmas. I think it was that Christmas. I had someone, I'm not going to say, I had somebody, come on, you can have one because it wasn't like I was doing it court ordered. You know, right. I wasn't going to go to jail if I had a drink. <laughs> Um, there wasn't any reason medication wise, like there was no reason other than me making that decision for myself. So I think anybody that knows me would probably be like, come on, who are you fooling? Just yeah. have a drink and then go do your thing. It's going to be especially if you're really good at it, Don, <laughs> right? Like you were good at it. I was a champ. <laughs> I really was. I was so good at drinking. I excelled. But yeah, I think um, I don't have a good history of following through like with exercise and things like that. I did quit smoking and I did that cold Turkey. Right. Um, but so I knew I had it in me, but I know I have an addictive personality too. But you've done the two, I think, hardest things for a person to do smoking and drinking. Right. I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of willpower. That is yeah. a lot of willpower. I know. I probably don't give myself enough credit for that, but it is. It is, but they kind of go hand in hand too. Like once, because I always like to light up whenever I was drinking and I was always drinking. So yeah. <laughs> they kind of just happened together. But yeah, I'm proud of myself. I am that I quit. Um, but again, I don't fault anybody else if, they, if they're still on that path. 
But anybody that knows me or has known me for any long period of time knows that I really, really like to drink. Yeah. And so I would hope that that would give them some inspiration. Like if Dawn can do it, yeah. Yeah. I for sure can do it. I, yeah, I, I thought it was so fun for me then. And now are I you just... more, are you more alcohol aware? Like if you're at a party or somewhere, are you like, oh gosh, that person's oh, oh. not because, because let's face it. If you're in it, you're not really aware of it, so to speak. Cause you're in it yeah. and when you're not on the outside, but when you're not drinking and everyone around you is, you're slowly seeing the changes of the situation, whereas you're the steady state, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and I remember that from being pregnant three times, you know, oh, it's like a science experiment. You see yeah, I people... forgot about that. So you've already done this before. Yeah, right, right, oh, yeah. right. You see people come in, you know, and all dolled up and looking great. And then you just, it's, you see them slowly deteriorate, like the makeup. And yeah, I remember that every time when I was pregnant, I would just think it was disgusting how people would get so drunk and yeah. hormones. You're more aware of it, but again, I try not to judge it. Yeah. Yeah. Because been there, been there and then some. So I try not to judge it. I want everybody to have a good time, you know, as long as they're being safe about it. Yeah. It's yeah. funny. There's a picture of uh my wife's mom at a Halloween party and she went as Phyllis Diller and she is <laughs> eight months pregnant with Karen with a drink in her hand and a cigarette in her yes, hand. Right? Yes. And you're like, oh my gosh, right? Like that was so acceptable. Way. So yes. cool. it didn't matter. You know, it's fine. <laughs> no, uh, that's everybody did that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just and we all turned out okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> but do, have you, and maybe this is just me. I did say this in my, um, my episode about drinking and going sober, but do you, have you ever experienced where you've gone to something and you've imbibed and had a fantastic time and maybe little bits you don't quite remember. Yeah. And then, then, and then whether it's social media or just pictures in general, and they're like, Oh, we've got pictures back from so-and-so's wedding. Did you ever have a moment of like, ooh, because me, yeah. so scared. I would yeah, be like, thing, oh God, what was I doing? I hope I wasn't anywhere near there. Yeah. yeah. The thing you the thing you said in your episode that that resonated with me is is uh not remembering what I said, right? Like being like, gosh, I think I may have insulted someone last night, or I may have you know, set a secret or I may, you know, like who knows what you do when you get a little bit over that edge, right? Yes. And you kind of run your mouth a little bit. And this is why you shouldn't be drinking at company functions, you know, you know, my right. boss is kind of an ass, you know, I mean, you can't do that. But, uh, but I, I have had the, you know, to be honest, I've had those moments and you're, and I'm thinking back, holy moly. And then you have to ask someone, did mm -hmm. I say anything bad about, mm -hmm. Gina at the party last night. Right. That's, that's a that's not a good situation. Right? right. Or if you get together with friends the next day or a couple of days later and maybe somebody's not talking to you and you yeah. or you get the cold and it's like, oh God, did I say? <laughs> did I yeah? And so when I talked through that episode, I really just laid it all out there of things that made me have anxiety after drinking, you know, or whatever. And I hoped that it did resonate for some people, like maybe that would be the, oh gosh, that's happened to me. Oh, that's happened to me. Oh, that's okay. Maybe not quick cold turkey, but maybe, maybe yeah. I need to cut back a little bit or yeah. not drink at company functions or, you know, whatever, not me being great or better than anybody else, but it was just, those were real things for me. Those were things where it was just like, or I wouldn't remember anything. You know, poor Nathan, yeah. my husband never drinks and we'd watch TV and I'd have to ask him what happened the last hour of the episode last night. He, he doesn't drink. No, never drinks. So if I was drinking. He would maybe have a beer, you know, every wow. sixth time or something. Wow. Yeah. Talk about a saint. Somebody that oh sits my next gosh. to somebody yeah. that's just drinking, you know, bottles of wine every night, drunk. And he's sober as sober can be. So he's your designated driver. He's your guy at the party. He's your mm -hmm. shoulder to lean on. He helps you in the car. He's that yeah. guy. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. And I was just like, so what, what happened at the end of Dateline last night? And he's like, what's the last thing you remember? We would do this every Saturday morning. What's the last thing you remember about Dateline? And it became our norm. And when I look back on it, I'm like, that is, that is not normal. It is common for the, our house, but that is not normal for, for somebody to black out all the time, not have any memories And so it is fun to go to things now and be aware of everything that's happening. I mean, if it's happening around me, if it's in another room, obviously I don't, but just leaving, feeling good, waking up, feeling good, knowing everything that happened the the time before it is a good feeling. And to me, it feels better than the, the buzz of being drunk. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, the few times I've, you know, had little streaks. I haven't been pregnant. So, um, but the few what? times I've had little streaks of, of not drinking right in, I'll bring non a non-alcoholic beer or something to a friend's house. It's funny because I'll have one and then I'll have another. And then, then you said it, it's like, what's the point, right? Like if you're going to have a, buy a pack of cigarettes, as you said, and you only smoke one or two, what's the point of me doing this? Why am I doing yeah. this? Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, you eat when you're hungry, you drink when you're thirsty. But alcohol is not a thirsty thing. So it's one of, I think it may be the only time you're consuming something, but not because you're thirsty or not because you're hu- usually hungry and you eat it. So, but yeah. thirsty, you're just drinking because that is the plan, which is weird. And when you get non alcoholic beer or, or your, you know, how many, how many soda waters are you going to have that night? You're not right. going to drink nine soda waters, <laughs> right? But but you might have nine beers or... Yeah. Oh, for two. sure. So it's so bizarre because if I drink non-alcoholic beer, I'll have two and I'm done. And I'm like, I'm done and I'm not thirsty, but yet I'm not drinking alcohol. So what am I doing for the rest of the night, right? And yeah. then I need something in my hand just to kind of be a buddy. So I'm, you know... Yeah, I weird. know it is. It, it's a weird thing. That's so true. Because normally you wouldn't sit there and just pound eight drinks. Eight glasses you know. of water. <laughs> you just put that up, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. I guess, and I, after the fact, I never really loved the taste of wine anyway. I loved what it did. It gave me a quick drunk. I could yeah. have two to three glasses of wine instead of eight beers. Because that's not ladylike. Well, neither is having purple lips and yeah. falling up and down the stairs, you know, yeah. I, but that's what made me switch from beer to wine was because it was, and then, you know, then it's like, oh, maybe I should try hard stuff. What is my goal here? <laughs> what is my actual goal? Do I want to switch into tequila? <laughs> I've made a decision because it, you, you're not as bloated, I guess. You wouldn't be as bloated, right? Obviously, if you're drinking yeah. 12 ounce beer or a right. shot of tequila, yeah. but you're going to get hit harder, I think. With right. whiskey or woof. yeah, well, but I mean, like, what what is the goal? What yeah. is what yeah. is the actual? If I'm like, I think I'm switching to whiskey. Why? What are you wanting to happen? What it's and the buzz, right? I mean, the buzz is that what it is? It's that I, buzz. I guess I just didn't know when to stop. Yeah, because I could have hit the the best of the buzz, but then I keep going. And yeah. going and going until I don't remember or I'm puking, you know, and yeah, yeah, it's just, I just look back on it and think, what was my goal? What was I trying to accomplish besides feeling like crap? Because the older you get, it takes longer. It does. It yeah. Takes and you pay for it recover. the next day a lot more. At oh, 21, yeah, like- you just roll out of bed and you're fine. Right. And right. At 51, it's a little, you know, it's the headache. <laughs> It's the, you know, three hours after you wake up, it's not good. No, you're calling in sick to work on Wednesday from what you did on Saturday. Yeah. That's, that's not, that's no bueno, but yeah, I, I don't regret quitting at all. I I remember the little mind games that I would play with myself. If I found a diet, you know, cause I, I don't know, I always am looking for a way to stay fit and lean or get that way. Yeah. And if it would say cut out alcohol, it's like, <laughs> that's not going to do. <laughs> I need to find the diet where they it's say. It's a non-starter. <laughs> the cheese puff alcohol diet. Perfect. That'd be my, my perfect diet. <laughs> 
Right. Like that's what I was looking for, for somebody to say, we would really like if you would drink as much wine as possible and yeah. then just have a cracker. And I, that's the diet for me. But all the diets were like, get rid of alcohol. Don't have alcohol. Yeah. And I would always Google what, what is the one with the least amount of carbs? What's the yeah. one? Always looking for that. Is it, way. Vodka? Is vodka the miracle alcohol? Uh, least it probably is. The clear... Yeah. The clear, yeah. yeah. Just just drink rubbing alcohol like or that. something. No, <laughs> I, I don't like, I do not like vodka. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, and you know how your body reacts different to different alcohols yeah. and stuff. And that's kind of what I was saying to you before we hit record, that my experience is mine. I can't tell somebody, you know, don't drink this or don't drink at all or don't. It's your own experience. And you know, you know, if yeah. you need to quit drinking. Yeah. If it is... A functioning alcoholic I thought I was for so long. Yeah. And then I just realized, am I really functioning? Because if I'm waking up and taking aspirin first thing to make up for the headache that I have from drinking too much, and then I have to follow it with Pepto because my stomach's upset because my uh, all the drinking and then the aspirin, you know, yeah. it's like, am I really a functioning? I don't think so. I think if it weren't for all those things that I had to take in order to feel okay, it just wasn't good. Yeah, I, I did because I can't help myself. I, the CDC had 10.7 million people in the United States are alcoholics, 10.7 million. And an additional 7.3 or something like that have had incidents with alcohol. So fights, DUIs, mm -hmm. you know, domestic abuse, what had had bad experiences due to alcohol. So that's that's about... 17.6 million or so, which is 5% of the population in the U.S. has issues with alcohol. And Don, it's prob that's probably a low number. I was going to say, how did they get their, their 10 million? How did they get that number? I have no idea whether whether it's people in a program or, you know, it, it could be registered alcoholics or recovering alcoholics versus, you know. Right. But I thought that was kind of fascinating, right? So at least 5%. So one in 20, if you look at a classroom of 20 kids. One of them is an alcoholic. And and again, that's probably underreported, right? It if you has think about to be. Yeah. Binge like, drinking. Right. And, and college and high school, like you were saying, you know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, and like when you go to the doctor and, they, you know, do you drink? How many drinks? Oh, gosh. Oh, you know, and it's like. Do I have to answer honest? Like they're going to hook you up to some kind Does of machine. Does anyone ever answer that question honest, right? I doubt it. You feel instantly it. judged by that question, right? right? right. And you, and they want to hear what they want to hear, like two to three drinks a week, and you yes. know, and and I'm reflecting on Friday night, thinking, right? Yeah, and I had five. How, how big of a pour are we talking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I to go fifty whatever years. And most of them being a drinker, I, I still, you know, find humor in all of it. I think it's funny and fun and all, I get it. I get it, yeah. but it's just not for me anymore. So, um, so what's I, your advice? So we're heading into the holidays. we got Thanksgiving. we got Christmas ahead of us. A lot of, a lot of time that is the joyous fun as, as mm -hmm. you kind of talked about and family and getting together. And a lot of time it's a lot of stress, right? People, we may have issues with family coming, family arguments, different political views, blah, blah, blah. That's all in the mix during the holidays, as you well know. Yeah. So what's kind of, you know, what, what are some things you think people could do or what would you recommend someone does? Well, I think everyone knows what what's happening. They know what's coming. You know, if you have one side that's Republican and one side's Democrat and you know they're going to talk about it, you know, having a drink is not going to fix that. Yeah, it's it's going to happen no matter what. Yeah. Um, you know, if you don't get along with your mother in law or your mom, you know, you know that having a drink doesn't change it. And if anything, it might make it worse. Yeah. Um, I would say just to have those boundaries set up. You know, a lot of people don't even get together with the people and their family that they know they have conflict or make their holidays bad. They just set up those boundaries. Um, you know, just spend as least amount of time as you possibly can with the people that trigger that feeling in you, Yeah. you know, um, anything that makes you feel like you need a drink, 
that's definitely something that you need to address yeah. and figure out, you know, why do I feel that around that person? Either talk to them beforehand. I can't have you talking about politics when you're here. Yeah. It makes yeah. everybody uneasy, you know, whatever you have to do so that you can make it comfortable for yourself. If mocktails are what makes you feel more comfortable that you're part of the group, but honestly, I think everybody's so worried about themselves. I don't think anybody would notice one way or the other if you were yeah. drinking or if you weren't, you know. You're right. You're right. Everybody's yeah. got their own stress list going on in their head. <laughs> um, but I don't I don't feel stress. I look forward to it. And I am so happy now that I can remember it all. And I can actually take it all in and be 100% present. I can be 100% there and experience it all, good, bad, or otherwise, and not feel like crap the next day. So, yeah. and with a grandchild, right? I mean, that too, right? Not only kids, but a grandchild. I mean, that's those are yeah. moments you've been waiting for. That's right. the payoff, right? Yes. You don't really forget the payoff. Yes. That's, that's what you want. That's you know? right. Three, three little grandkids, and they're all going to be just fun ages for Christmas this year. And I, you know, I just, I, after losing a parent, which I know you lost your dad as well it makes those moments just so much yeah. more special because yeah. you don't know when you won't have another holiday with those same people. You know, it doesn't, yeah. we're not all fortunate enough to get to have everybody around all the time. So um, yeah, it just feels good to be present. And that is my present to myself for yeah. Christmas. It's amazing, Don. I mean, congratulations. It's, uh, you know, again, quitting smoking, super hard, Stopping alcohol just with the social pressures of alcohol in today's society. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it is the one thing that everybody is okay with to some degree, right? Yeah. And it's, and it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's, a, that's an amazing feat. So, you know, I am a million people said it, you can see it in the comments. Congratulations. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it so much. And this was fun just to sit and talk about it. Cause I don't really talk about it that much. You know, Nathan, my husband and his family, they aren't, aren't big drinkers or anything. So he didn't grow up around that. He didn't have that. So when he walked into my world, it was just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Completely yeah. different. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So he's super happy. You know, he never asked me to, he never said one way or the other. He's married to me for a long time before I decided to quit. And he's never asked me to stop, but he's super happy because he said, you know, we're growing old together and I don't want you to be sickly and, yeah. you know, he's younger than me. So if he doesn't want to take care of me, <laughs> I don't blame him. I don't blame him, you know, but you don't think about the health aspects of it no. when you're just having a good time. You don't think, yeah. oh, is this going to impact me in my seventies, but it will eventually <laughs> so yeah but thanks so much for for coming on and yeah and thank talking you. to me about it it was really fun it was fun to have uh just a a buddy on instead of an expert well not that you're not an expert no you're i'm an not an expert but uh <laughs> yeah i think i just it's just just it's a nice show to do for people as we all enter the holidays and everybody you know, everyone could just use a gut check. Even if everything's great, it's just nice to ponder it, right? It's a topic to think about. And right. with my relationship with alcohol, you know, do I have an issue? Gosh, I do. It, what they are saying is re resonates with me a little bit. You know, maybe I'll do X, Y, Z. Or maybe I won't do anything. But I think it's a nice reminder. Yeah, just to file it away, maybe. Yeah. And um yeah, because after the first of the year, you know, everybody does their their new thing, their New oh, Year's yeah. resolution thing. So maybe that'll be something that people could keep in the back of their mind or or just try it, you know, yeah. just try it for a weekend. Go out, yeah. try not to drink, be the driver, you know, designated driver and see how it feels. And it seems like it wouldn't be as fun to not drink, but I'm having just as much fun as yeah, I had when awesome. I was drinking. Yeah. So anyway, Anthony, thank you so much for thank being you, Don. here. I appreciate it. And we'll have to have you on again soon. I think it's, it's fun to have a little co-host action. I'm always available. All right. All right. Yeah. We'll see you. Thank you. You bet. Bye-bye.